blind their eyes and harden their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. There's a lot of people today who would like to be healed without accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's a lot of people who would like to get to heaven without accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. How could this be? How could this be when Jesus Christ said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man can get to the Father except by me. It is impossible. So please, think about it. Think about it as a very, very serious issue. Salvation is now. Jesus died for your salvation. You need to accept it while you're alive, while you have time. The Bible says, receive it while you have time. Time's running out. It says, these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. It says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, uh, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Now there was some. There was some among the Pharisees that did believe. But it had to be secret. Like secret admirers, secret believers. They couldn't come out and confess. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. So if you believe in Jesus Christ and you don't want to confess it with your mouth, if you don't want to acknowledge him before men, Jesus said, I will not acknowledge you before my Father who is in heaven. And here are some of the Pharisees, sure they believed, but they kept it a secret. What is a secret? You love the Lord in secret. What is that going to do? You've got to proclaim His name. You've got to proclaim your faith. You've got to proclaim your love for Him no matter what it costs. Jesus said, yeah, you've got to give up your life for Him. They go on to say, uh, verse 43, For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You remember, in John 9.22, Jesus healed uh, the boy that was born blind. And, and the Pharisees came, they asked the parents. The parents said, hey, you know, we know that this is our son. He was blind. But how, how he sees now, we really don't know. Why don't you ask him? He's old enough. See, they knew. But they couldn't say it because uh, there was a decree out that if anyone would confess this Jesus as being the Christ, he'd be thrown out of the synagogue. But surely enough, the man who, who was uh, healed, uh, he, he confessed Jesus. He was thrown out anyway. And Jesus found him see, and, and, and continued uh, with him. Ask him, do you believe in, in the Son of God? He said, yeah, who is he? You see, you're looking at him. And the man worshipped Jesus. He didn't care. See, So we, we more or less want to bring this uh, to a close. Uh, verse 44, Jesus, uh, he cried and he said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. See, he's expressing his deity here. He who believes on me, believes on him that sent me. He goes on to say, He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Now, that's a pretty strong statement here. He says, He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me, which is the Father. Same thing. We'll, we'll hear more about that uh, with the same Philip. Philip would ask Jesus, Jesus, why don't you show us the Father? And Jesus would say, hey, Philip, listen to me. You've been with me for so long. And you're going to ask me a question like that, show me the Father. Don't you know, Philip, that the Father is in me and, and I am the Father? You know, we'll read all about that in more detail next time. And it says, I am come, I am come a light into the world. John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He says, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth in me should not abide in darkness. I am the light. And he says, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I come not to judge the world, but to save the world. John 3, 17 says that God sent Jesus into the world, not to judge the world, but that through him the world would be saved. And Jesus is confirming this statement. These are some of the things we need to remember. Don't believe that Jesus is here to judge you and to condemn you. That's not what he's all about. Jesus is a compassionate Jesus. I've said it over and over again. 
Jesus is love. God is love. Jesus is love. And he so, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Even though there are some that will not believe, some that will not come found. But I'm praying that all of you who are listening to this program today and haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior will come forward and receive him as your Lord and Savior. I pray for this. He goes on to say, He that receiveth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Now who's the judge? Listen. He says, The words, the word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. The word that Jesus has spoken, that's the word that's going to judge him. That's the word. We've got the word here now. We've got the word. We need to receive that word and be free in Jesus' name. See, and, and went on to say, uh, uh, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father would sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that this commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. My friend, we've got to understand that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God incarnate, 1 Timothy 3.16 said there is no controversy about godliness, that God was manifest in the flesh. John 1, 1 said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God. Verse 14 says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt on